All right, now, uh, case uh, number two. So this is a small lytic lesion in one of the phalanx bones on the finger of a, of a young adult patient, okay? And as is often the case with bone, uh, we got uh, multiple curette fragments, all right? On imaging, this was a lytic lesion on x-ray and on, um, on uh, MR, it was clearly a cartilaginous lesion. So a lot of times preoperatively, the orthopedic surgeon has a good idea that something may be a cartilage lesion. Every once in a while, the radiologist thinks something will be cartilage and it ends up being something not cartilaginous that has maybe a lot of myxoid background that has that similar signal intensity as cartilage. But usually the radiologists are very good and the orthopedic surgeons very good at recognizing when something's gonna be a cartilaginous uh, bone tumor, all right? So the fragmentation of cartilage specimens, and I'll, I won't lie to you, cartilage tumors are not my favorite thing because a lot of times they're low grade cartilage things and I've got a bunch of fragments and sorting out enchondroma versus chondrosarcoma on low grade specimens can be very, very challenging if, if not impossible sometimes because a lot of the features of helping us decide if something is a, a low grade, well, what used to be called grade one chondrosarc and is now sometimes called atypical central cartilaginous tumor in the new WHO in the long bones, um, it can be mostly based on the growth pattern, right? Is it infiltrating and entrapping normal bone or is it breaking out of the cortex and invading the soft tissue? Those are malignant features, okay? But um, in long bones, you have to be very, very careful even with low grade cartilage uh, because it's very difficult to tell um, uh, benign versus malignant or, or atypical, okay? And the important distinction here, um, and I have a video on my YouTube channel uh, that Andrew Rosenberg sat down with me, and he's an amazing, just a master of bone pathology and a wonderful teacher. And he talked through some of the things that can help sort out in chondroma of bone versus chondrosarcoma low grade. Okay, so um, in, that, um, in, in any case, though, the, the features in the long bone, the way you approach a cartilage tumor, is different than how you approach it in the small tubular bones of the hands and feet, okay? In the hands and feet, chondrosarcoma is exquisitely rare. I've seen a handful of cases, but very, very rare, all right? I, what I always tell my residents is you should not make a diagnosis of chondrosarcoma or osteosarcoma in the hands and foot unless you're a bone and soft tissue pathology expert. And even still, I do it with great trepidation uh, because um, I know how rare it is and I want it to be absolutely definitive either on pathology or ideally on radiology, okay? So this lesion here is cartilage, but it's a lot more cellular than a normal cartilage looks like and more cellular than an enchondroma in a long bone would look like, right? We've got an increased density of the chondrocytes. And it's, I always find it hard to evaluate chondrocytes for atypia because they usually are kind of small and very dark, uh, hyperchromatic nuclei look almost like black, you know? And so it's very hard to see anything in there. And sometimes the stroma or the, or the um, cytoplasm um, can pick up extra stain and make it harder, even harder. So um, I feel like uh, the H&E stain in different labs can produce a very different appearance on the same block of the same cartilage tumor. Sometimes it, the, the matrix material really picks up the hematoxin very strongly and other times it doesn't, okay? So um, just keep that in mind. But in any case, this is cellular. There's a bit larger, a little bit more atypical cells. So you might get a little worried about this, but again, radiographically, this was a small lesion confined to the bone and it's in the fingers, in the hands and feet. A chondroid lesion is going to be benign until proven otherwise, okay? So even if it's cellular, even if it has atypia, if it's radiographically um, not, not obviously destroying the bone invading soft tissue, then I'm gonna call that an enchondroma, okay? Now, if it does destroy the bone and invade soft tissue, or if it has obvious permeating, infiltrating growth and trapping normal bone, which is very, very difficult, if not impossible to see on a curatage specimen, you know, but if it has those obviously malignant growth patterns, well, that's a different story. But again, I encourage you to get consultation uh, with an expert in bone and soft tissue before ever rendering a diagnosis of chondrosarc or osteosarc in the small bones of the hands and the feet, okay? It does happen, it's just very rare. And what very well may happen to that patient is an amputation or partial amputation. So a lot is on the line uh, for patients in that setting. So this was a benign enchondroma of the uh, finger. Really nice example. And oh yeah, I didn't point out, sometimes you can get little, little islands of calcification uh, and little bits of bone in the background of, the, of cartilaginous lesions. Both benign and malignant ones can do that. But see how cellular it gets? Kind of scary looking, right? 
but is benign. And I don't have a radiograph of this one to show you, but it was benign radiographically.